string of suspicious fires appear to be targeting black churches in the South. Since the June 17th massacre in Charleston, South Carolina, at least four predominantly black churches have been damaged or destroyed. Nighttime fires have been reported in Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Most are suspected as arson. Both the FBI and the ATF have joined some of the investigations. We celebrate Christ because of who he is and what he's done for us on the cross. The lack of a building will not keep us from doing that. So we will gather in the morning and we will worship and we will praise and, and God will get us through this. Tear down what's left of a wall at Fruitland Presbyterian Church Wednesday, just hours after fire destroyed the building. Well, it's just sad. I cried. You know, I just said, um, I can't. It's just like losing a family member. Elaine Dooley grew up in the church and says her daughter got married here. I have a fondness members of the Sunday school classes, the Sunday school teachers. That's where I got saved. I got baptized. The state fire marshal's office, along with the ATF, try to determine what sparked Tuesday night's fire. Whatever we have instilled in us, if it's low, if it's low in spirit, uh, we can be revived uh, 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 spiritually. And, and we low in spirit, but God revived us before it even started. And I, I, feel, I got a feeling of revival now that it's going to happen because of this. We're going to turn it, uh, God going to turn it to his glory. I couldn't believe it, and I was very thankful that no more damage uh, was done than, than what had actually occurred. Ashes, burned hay and dirt still remained on the ground in front of College Hill Seventh Day Adventist Church. Horror. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? It's from a fire last night that Pastor Cleveland Hobby believes was set on purpose by someone. Knoxville Fire Department says when they arrived, hay and dirt were set on fire while leaning on church doors. When I see this, I think of an intention to try to destroy this, this entire church. Which Hobby thinks is a hate crime against his predominantly black congregation. It makes it sad. It's sad either way that, that someone would put their mind to try to damage a church that's trying to help people. And off the top of his head, Pastor Hobby can't think of one person who could possibly want to set his church on fire. We don't have any enemies that I know of at all. Other than the burnt doors, there's minimal damage to the building. Church member Marshall Henley is happy for that. If this had been a wood frame building, we would have had probably a, a different result. So I'm, I'm grateful that the building is brick and it was it's pretty sturdy. However, they did lose one of their vans, which was also set on fire. Here are photos of what was left. Ashes of the remaining parts are still in the parking spot. That's a big disappointment because it was a usable van. It was a good van. Pastor Hobby is just happy the fire alarms worked, which allowed firefighters to get to the church quickly. In Knoxville, Brandon Rook, WATE6, on your side. Hate crime this time in North Carolina. There was a three alarm fire at a mostly black church in Charlotte just one week after the deadly church shooting in Charleston. The blaze was reported early yesterday morning, and investigators say it was arson. Now, Charlotte police are trying to figure out if it was a hate crime. The church's pastor says his congregation has already forgiven the person who started the fire. We really want to actually cover it in love. We actually don't have any malice against anyone else. The damage is estimated to be about $250,000. Finally tonight, in 1963, this country reached a crossroads in the struggle for civil rights. Just weeks after Martin Luther King Jr.'s groundbreaking I Have a Dream speech, his dream of racial equality seemed dashed in one horrific act of hate. It was 50 years ago today, four black girls were murdered in the bombing of a Birmingham, Alabama church, where today their lives were honored. Here's NBC's Sarah Dalloff. Bells rang out across a clear blue sky, marking the moment a bomb ripped through the 16th Street Baptist Church on another Sunday, five decades ago. Inside, five girls had stopped at the bathroom on their way to hear the day's sermon. Carol Robertson, Cynthia Wesley, Denise McNair, and Addie Mae Collins were killed. Collins' sister, Sarah Collins Rudolph, survived. I heard this loud sound. Boom, and then 
debris came coming. It came in and blinded me. The death of the four girls symbolized a terrible reality in Birmingham. Violence against those who fought for equal rights was common. What murdered these four girls? The apathy and the complacency of many Negroes who will sit down on their stools of do nothing and not engage in creative protest to get rid of this evil system. During the next two years, the nation saw the passage of key civil rights bills and the end of segregation, a legacy of the four little girls lost. I've always been really touched by what happened here. But once I became a parent, everything is just elevated. The same Sunday school sermon planned for 50 years ago was given this morning. Later, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, a Birmingham native who was friends with Denise McNair, spoke. It was terrifying for a child of eight, but I, I think really it must have been much more terrifying for the parents of Birmingham to wonder if when they put their kids to sleep they were going to wake up. And a sculpture commemorating the four victims was unveiled. Located in a park near the church, it captures the moment right before the bombing. Because of them, it's just opened up avenues and doors for us as a people. Innocence and joy forever frozen in time. In Birmingham, Alabama, Sarah Dolloff, NBC News. It's, it's still critical to bring Nazis to justice. One is that the passage of time in no way diminishes the guilt of the killers. The fact that they were able to elude justice for many years doesn't change anything. Two, we don't think old age should protect people who committed mass murder. The, the, we're obviously at a very late stage. In another few years, two or three years, this will no longer be possible. So it should be done as quickly as it can be done. Talk to us a little bit about South Carolina and race relationships in that particular area there. Well, race is a very important issue in South Carolina. The uh, state is roughly 50-50 uh, white and black. It's uh, got a history of racial tension uh, that goes right back into the 19th century, into slavery times. Uh, it was very prominent during the civil rights era where racial tensions came to the fore uh, over many years in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, it's still an undercurrent of the state even now. Uh, when you go to South Carolina, it's very apparent that uh, white people tend to be in the uh, more high-profile jobs, the better paid jobs. Black people tend to be in the uh, mean, more menial jobs and they're paid less. Uh, that is still you know, true today. And I think still it's quite a segregated state, you know, not legally, but sort of informally. Like there are black churches, there are black shopping malls, there are black districts where the, the population is majority black and, and there are white equivalents to those. I mean, the worst bit is the fact that this was a, uh, a peaceful church gathering. This was not a, you know, a suspect who's been shot by the police uh, in dubious circumstances. This is a, uh, you know, peaceful you know, area of, of Charleston. Uh, these, these people were not doing anything that remotely that could be classified as dangerous. And this vigilante has gone in and has basically murdered people. But the race issue never went away in America. Um, it's it's been been there constantly. I mean, things do change very gradually over time as populations change. I mean, young people tend to be less uh, racially prejudiced than, for example, older generations. But clearly, in this case, we have a young white man who has committed this awful crime, and so there are still segments of the white population that have real problems, uh, you know, with black people.